So there's two kinds of people in the summer. There's people like Earl who get intoxicated by Ellie Dela Cruz in baseball. <laughs> or there's people like me who spend three hours on a Saturday <laughs> going back through summer league games, breaking down play by play mm -hmm. of how certain rookies have developed and uh, came into their own. It was quite the debut for one of Monty Bates, G. Yeah, I, 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 email, I text you. We, we, we were going back and forth. Yeah. We were going back and forth. I broke it down into three categories, the good, the bad, and the eh. And we'll get that in one sec. Before we do this, Tyvis, real quick, 15 seconds, your initial first impression of Bates through two games. You know, he did exactly what I thought he was going to do. I mean, he was a guy that could score. Um, he shoots a lot of shots, I tell you that. He, <laughs> he needs to be, if he gets his, um, what's the word he I'm looking for? He fixes his A button. His efficiency down and become an... I mean, he was just literally like a like a pickup basketball player. He was exactly what we thought he was. Um, he got to get more team structure. I think the second game showed a little bit more to me as far yeah. as team structure is in the second game than the first. But the first game, he did exactly what I expected him to do. Shoot a lot of shots. Some went in, some didn't. But it is what it is. G, real quick, and then we'll get into the break. C I got first game C minus. I thought he played a C minus. I thought, he, you know. There's a couple shots that he showed you what it was, what it, we, that we that his say, first shot let you know what it was. Hey, like they said, like he's a dude that when he shoot, you automatically think he's gonna go in, but he missed a lot of shots and he could have took some 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 little sauce off of it. Yep. Second game yesterday, a lot better. I thought yep, a lot yep. better played in offense. <laughs> I thought he, he had a better overall game. Yeah, so I didn't, I was in Cincinnati yesterday for the post Malone concert. I didn't get to do a full breakdown of the second game like I did the first, but we'll do some more of this as we go along. But I went through and we got. About 12 clips from the first game that I want to go. We'll show you the good. We'll show you what drives you crazy. And we'll show you the what he can work on. Mm -hmm. So, Earl, we got him ready? Let's, let's start, do it. Which let's start with the first one. We're going to start with the first. We'll go in order. And the first was the first make of the game for Imani Bates. His first three-pointer that he made. And this one was special. Steve, we got all the videos. Whenever you want to it, we'll break <laughs> it through. Watch Bates come down here. And this is why we love Amani Bates' potential. There's just not a lot of dudes on the Cavs roster, really anyone at that size who can make shots like that. Comes down. It's not transition. The Nets have just made a shot. Gets a switch on Jalen Wilson. Sidestep three with a 6'7 defender in his face. Look like Nothing my dude on 2K. It's a 2K move, but that's what Amani Bates can do. He's a tough shot maker. He's a tough shot taker. And when he's making shots like that, he's impossible to stop. Let's go to the next one, Steve. We'll run right through these relatively quickly. If you guys have any questions, you want me to break thing, anything down a little more, we'll, we'll get into that. Here was one of my favorite plays from Bates the whole game. You'll see it again when he goes through. He doesn't move a ton off the ball. If you watch him, he stands still a lot. But check out this little back screen there. It makes his defender be in a help position. So when Mobley takes one <laughs> dribble towards him, the defender has to step up. Watch his defender on Bates. Mobley has to step up. Catch, shoot, fire. I, that's beautiful. By the way, Bates. by the way, M Mobley saw that, and that's impressive for a four to see yep. that. And he was like, "Yo, let me get my man the ball. I'm not open." By the way, I, I laughed and told my, uh, Mike that Mobley's uh, young, older brother has better ball skills than his younger brother. We'll get to Mobley and we got some other guys <laughs> we'll talk about in a sec. All right, the third make of the game from Bates. This is the toughest shot he made all oh, day. This one, super. this one is the one that is why you draft a guy and hope he can develop into something because the amount of guys in the NBA, not just on the Cavs roster. But in general, who can make shots like this consistently at 6'9 is low. Crossover, oh, step back in the corner, oh. in a guy's face. That's pretty good defense from the guy in the nets. Mm. But watch this little shimmy from Bates. Mm. He's shifty. Jab, cross, step, fire from three. That's his little It's move. silky. Ooh, that is the kind of stuff that you draft Bates. That's his hoping move. he can do more consistently. Hush. Beautiful. That's All right, he made one more three in this game. Okay. We'll get to the last one. This was in transition. <laughs> They're interviewing Karis Avert. Little give, go, get back, and fire. A little quick. I don't think he needed to pull that, but we learned that the dude's going to catch and shoot, and we'll get to some of the he already decisions. Did. And, and, and the cool thing about Monty Bay, his 2K game, he shot the ball. He already He's back quick. court. He already back. Yep. Look, I'm already going. I'm at half court. You don't even yep. see me in the screen no more. You all right, next, who, next play is a backdoor. This is my favorite play he made all game, and it wasn't even a made shot. It's a backdoor cut. I said, and I stand by this, Monty Bates. He doesn't move a lot off the ball. He's most comfortable just standing in the corner, waiting for the chance to get the ball, then going ISO. But watch him here. He's in the top left of your screen, and we're going to slow it down in a sec. Jab step, back door, great pass from Mobley again. Him and Mobley have a mm -hmm. nice little chemistry. Mm -hmm. Gets fouled, makes the free throws. Watch this quick jab step as Mobley takes a half dribble towards him, thinking it's a handoff. Goes back door, forces the guy to rotate over, draws a foul. That That's a really intelligent basketball play for a guy who's not known as a great cutter. It shows me he has the sense of what he needs to be doing in those situations. Who is that on the Just want to see a little though? more. 
What do you say? Who is that on the dunk? Uh, One of them jobs. Jop? Yes. <laughs> it is not the sign. <laughs> it is not the sign that Jobs Get out the way. Uh, that wasn't the only time he had some good off-ball movement here. This next one happened in transition off a defensive rebound. Sam Merrill gets the kick out, and Merrill's another dude. Not afraid to shoot the oh, ball. That man will Merrill, catch and shoot. Merrill will hit the rim. So Cooper gives it up to Merrill here. Bates does a good job spacing. He's in the corner. As soon as he sees Merrill drive, takes one step in, gets his only two-point bucket of the game there. But that's a smart, heady play to see Merrill's coming in. Not an angle to kick it back to the corner because he dribbled with his left hand. All right, Merrill, you're going to drive. I'm coming with you. Open space. Find it. There you go. That's the good from Monty Bates. Mm-hmm. He's a scorer. When yeah. he's making shots, it looks pretty. He understands spacing. It's some of the other stuff that we got to figure out when to get to Now, let's next. get to this off-the-ball defense. <laughs> well, it's no defense. This is all on the offense. This next play is the epitome of why teams are a little hesitant on Imani Bates. Mm-hmm. We'll mm-hmm. play the full clip here. The Nets make a shot. It's third quarter, 22 seconds on the shot clock. He gets the inbounds pass and says, I'm going to go one on five. <laughs> gets know. stuffed, and then guess what? <laughs> they go down. They miss the shot. He gets a rebound. Bates never went past the foul line on the other end. Going one on five off an inbounds, eh, you can't really do that. It, like, you can. If it doesn't work, you've got to get back. And as a teammate, that's the kind of stuff that drives you crazy. And you see he learned something right there. See, the refs, not, the refs know when it's a good shot and a bad shot, too. They're not going to bail you they out They didn't bail They're him out. Bail like, you out he there. got hit with the body on the, on the low, on the contact underneath the shot. But the refs was like, nah, we're not going to set you up for failure because in the league, we're not going to call that, especially if you're a rookie. You don't get the you're benefit of the doubt in those situations. And, and listen, I'm not saying he has to come down. He's not a point guard. I don't need you to totally set the offense. But the craziest stat from the first game, Amani Bates, and I went back and I tracked this twice to make sure it's right. He touched the ball 33 times in the game. He took 19 shots and passed the ball 13 times. He had 32 touches. Excuse me, I said 33. No other player in the Cavs had more shots than touches. And you should never play in a game where you have more shots than touches. And that is almost unfathomable to do. <laughs> and Seriously. The, and the sisters go, Garrity, like if you go back and watch this next game, he had a couple of, of nice backdoor passes. Mm-hmm. He had a couple of nice little passes. And, and one thing, like I said, when you sent me that clip, I would have liked to see him rotate the ball a few more times. Just and kick, then, it. kick it. and then yeah. get it back. And then sometimes, because sometimes when you, you kick it and you relocate, you get a better opportunity. And we saw well, he, that's, We already know that that's the thing that he has to, the, to figure out. He gotta, it's the structure part yes. of it. He got to understand that. And here's what I love to see in game two, and I, I don't have a breakdown. He threw 13 passes in the, second, in the first half of game two by itself. Yeah. So they clearly said, Amani. Your A button, we got to put a little grease on that Xbox controller. you got to figure out how to kick. He threw four passes on the first possession of game two. Yep. He threw 13 the whole game. Got to pass the ball a little he, more. He and fi- it just going it one on five, it, the success rate of that is so low. LeBron, For anybody. LeBron did it. For any, It's not impossible. <laughs> but let's be honest. Amani's hey, not LeBron. He's not. Like, Giannis do it. And, and by the and way. once again, <laughs> Amani's not Giannis. When you it also one one knock on him, as you can see, and, and the problem with going one for one one versus five is when you show some of his good clips, when we relocated Sam Merrill, found him. Uh, he, he, went to the, do he went to yeah. the basket. He got a layup. Yep. He's not an explosive athlete, athlete. No, he's not. So like most six, nine guys, if you give them two dribbles and that 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 step, they're going off two feet, I'm and about you're about to be you. in the rim. Yeah. Like, no, he's right. not that type of guy. He, he, and he does not finish. <clears throat> he's not an elite finisher under the basket when contact. No. So that, those are the reasons why he, the best parts of his game look really good because he, he knows, hey, I ain't going to rap. I'm not going to yeah. do that. But he did hit his free throws. Um, but, yeah, he, he definitely yeah, that, has some stuff. He got to hit the weight room, man. Yeah, well, he's going to get there. We got we got a couple more. We still got some more bad, and we got the, the end. It is just a, a continuation of decisions. We'll get to that. The second one, though, was also a transition take. He gets credited for a steal here. I'm not sure how much he did to create that steal. He got a four-on-three with numbers. Oh, right behind him was wide open. That, that's what I don't like. That's Luke Travers behind him. Is it a bad take? It's not a terrible shot, but it's not the best basketball play. Stop, turn around, you got a guy open in the corner, the corner and, and you got a guy behind you. Yeah, you got two yeah. guys open for three as opposed to taking a running scoop shot. Once again, it's not a terrible shot. I don't yeah, he, hate the shot, but it's not the right basketball play. And when you're a guy who has the reputation that he has as a, I don't pass, 
like I said, 19 shots, 13 passes in game one. And the box score says 18. He got fouled. That's love, the 19th. I, I don't love that layup attempt. I, 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 That's what I said. I, I don't hate it. I don't like it. It's not good, but there were better basketball but the, 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 the I would have liked to see a train. That was a great opportunity for a secondary transition. There three. you go. A trailer he had three, a trailer. Yep. He could have hit he yep. could've wide open. Well, he what he got to realize is that teams are how many more summer league games is left? They play tonight. They play to see. They play so tonight, he, and it depends because they go playoffs. What he need to realize is that these teams are doing their they doing their scout reports and they understand that he is the pretty much essentially the guy offensively. So he he need to take that and you utilize that against them. He should spend time trying to drive to the lane and stop and then turn and around kick. and kick it. Like, cause they gonna yep. drive. Everybody's gonna key in to him when he got the ball. So where he really need to realize is that he need to think like how LeBron think. Like I'm. Everybody knows I can score, but what they don't know is I'm gonna kill him on the pass. And this game, I'm gonna spend this game just doming people. I'm gonna get to the hole, create some, get somebody yeah. else open, and turn around and give it to them. And with some of these mistakes and some of this, I'll say selfish play, but it's not necessarily in totality. In the summer league, it's fine. Yeah, well, you I mean, can't do that when you have Donovan Mitchell, Darius Garland, well, and he guys ain't on the gonna, court. He ain't gonna, because yeah. if, if you play like that with them on the court, you're not going to be on the or, court. Or unless, look, look. So, and, and that's, and and, I'm not, if you come off the bench, listen, you know, Karras is coming off. He already hot. Like, I'm already feeling myself. Yeah. Like, a little bit. But you know what? That The good thing about that is, that's the thing, finding your pecking order. Yeah. One thing I do like is, I like that. At least I know, if it's Madison Square Garden, the sweat. lights ain't gonna be too bright. I'm ready Damn to straight. shoot. That's Damn what I like. That's now, what I like. He, I'm he, ready he, to You know who you remind me of? And it's, it sounds crazy, but this is just kind of who you. Re- he reminds me of like a, a J.R. Smith, like that type in a way, of guy. In a way, he, cut, where he can yeah. he can be that guy that comes off the bench and just create, become on fire, like bring you back from like he's got, down. He's got to figure out once he's right. yeah. how to play systematically. You know, you know who he's equivalent to in Cleveland. <laughs> if he if he does play for the Charge this year, he will. This this will be just like Bo Naylor, where he'll be killing it in the Charge, and they'll be like. Monty Bates Cavs could use him. My, my, Cavs could use you. My, Monty Bates just scored 36. Yep. Cavs, he, I don't he's, know what the Cavs are doing. He's on a two-way. So he's going to play for the charge, and he's going to get a chance with the Cavs. That's what two-way is. we got two more on the bad category to break down. This one, just a little bit heady. Watch this drive from Bates here. It, it turns, it ends up being a turnover. I just don't know where he's trying to go here. And this is Bates. There's 15 seconds on the shot clock. It's down to eight here. There's two guys on the right side. He tries to drive into them. There's a guy with a foot in the paint. In help side. I'm just not sure where he's trying to go. There's a screenshot of it. <coughs> Where's the space you're driving? You have one of your own guys clogging up the lane anyway, Imani. At that point, just swing it. Let someone else have the offense. There's still 12 yep. seconds in the shot clock. No need for that. Uh, last one on the bad side. When you have the reputation he has coming in of being not a great team player, you got to give me a little hustle. When we show the replay, look where he starts on this play. And then see if you can follow him the rest of the play. Yeah, it's just no effort to get back. This was one play. I don't mean to pick on him, but those are the little things that if you want to make the Cavs roster, yeah, you can't be the fifth player on the court walking back down the court on a turnover. That just doesn't pan out. But in the second game, I thought he attacked more. I thought he was better in a lot of these next opportunities we're going to see in the egg category. And most importantly, he hustled his ass off. Yeah. In the second game, there was no lack of hustle. The egg category, Steve, you can run through all four of these. It's just shot selection. Mm-hmm. Quick releases. He touched this the very first time he touched the ball in the game. He ready. <laughs> Point three seconds where the shot went up. Is it a bad shot? It's actually not a bad, shot, not a bad shot. But but if you look at it, help side wasn't really even under no, the No, what he should have attacked. Somebody said he, 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 he should have pump fake yes. and went to the left. Oh my Once again, god, not, go on. not a bad shot. I'm not. It's just. <laughs> In and out. It's a little rough. Yeah, it's, right. it's, eh. But that's what I'm saying. He should know. Now he knows. Because everybody fake. know he's going to shoot. So he, Pump fake, he should add it to his game, attack. go to the left, and, and the dom actually going to be and right you ready? there. We'll the see that in the next one. Help. Steve, let's take, let's take rush shot number two here. This is the very next offensive possession for the Cavs, or the next time he touched the ball. So this is his second touch of the game. Decent defense right there on Jalen Wilson. Mm-hmm. I thought it was too. Here comes Sharif Cooper. Brings <laughs> it up. Little bit of space. Oh, he gone with it. That boy mind made. He has up. now touched the ball twice in the game. His He's held the ball for 0. 0.7 G. seconds in totality. G. And he took two shots. Once again, is it a bad shot? <laughs> it, it's boy, not a bad It's not a bad shot. It's, it's shot. a halfway open transition <laughs> three. 
But with 19 seconds on the shot clock, I don't think you need that shot. And yet. Channing said the same. Channing Fry was like, "Well, you know, I can't knock the shot, but oh hey, go ahead and um, yeah, swing that one time. That boy you know catch and shoot on hall. Uh, let's, go to, let's go to clip three, Steve. Once again, 19 shots, 13 passes in the game. That's really hard to do. This one, another good look. It's a decently open shot. <coughs> Defender halfway in his I face. Li- I didn't like that one. Halfway in his face. I don't like that one. But That's- once again. You don't need that shot right there. Mm-hmm. You don't need that. Just a little bit rushed. He, I don't. I don't he, hate it. He trigger happy. Oh, we knew that going in. <laughs> but I'm just pointing out. This is game one, right? This yeah. is all game. I didn't. Oh, get a and that's why. Yeah, yeah that's, that's what I'm saying. That's why. That's And then the last one, Steve. This was in the second half. Just another. This was right after he went one on five. By the way, this is the next possession after one on five. It's an open look. I'm not mad at that one. It's yeah. an open look. That's I just don't look. know if I love the immediate pull <coughs> after you go one on five, get blocked, and don't get back on defense. That's yeah, the, as immediately you touch it next. That's the the shoot a shooter. I think shooters be like this. Shooter shoot. It, yes. If you open, that overrides everything. Yeah. Like that overrides whether it's, it's cloudy outside, whether you're hungry. All you know is it's a green. Yeah. Like, I'm pulling up with that. And, and I like the fact that he's not scared to shoot. He's not scared to miss. You need guys with that irrational confidence. I didn't get a chance to go through and break down game two, but can I read you my notes real quick? Yeah, yeah. I didn't, I didn't get a chance to go highlights, but first possession, three passes. Mm-hmm. Double thumbs up. He was way more patient. Mm-hmm. Three times I counted, he attacked, closed out, and in the first quarter, he attacked, did a little hezy dribble left, led to a right-handed finger roll on yep. the baseline. Yep. I think you guys yep. hit the Cavs with it out. That's a great play. Uh, in the second quarter, he attacked another closed out for a mid-range jumper, missed a look. Great shot. It was a good shot. Uh, I wrote down he missed a lot of open looks, but took much better shots. He even caught an alley oop in transition. I, yeah, I saw that too. I saw now, that. I saw that. He caught it two hand. It's cool. It showed off his lack of athleticism. Yeah. He was barely above the rim <laughs> at six nine. But I'll take it. We got an and one. Hey, they, hey, they got they got a thing called plyometrics. Yep. Get on some. Uh, <laughs> I, I liked a couple off ball cuts. And I said he rushed a few shots, but you're going to have to look at that. That's the Imani Bates. Yeah. You're never going to get him to be a full system player, but if you can find <coughs> a couple minutes within the 25, 26 minute he plays I just, to be a little more efficient, I, play within he the wanted, system, he can be a player. He wanted he can be a player. I, He's, I, I, to be, he like J.R. Smith. If he <laughs> feeling it, he can be, he would go for 30 points easily. But when he not, it just look, it's just terrible basketball and a lot of stuff. But, I, you know, he could be a nice six man one day. He just got to. He got to understand when he he got to have find the balance of being that when when I'm hot. Yeah, take those shots. Nobody going to say nothing to you. But when I'm not hot or and I'm just in the game, I got to play structured basketball. Thing, do the thing, right thing. thing that really stood out to me like in the first two games, though, for real, for real was like as I'm watching um, Imani Bates play, um, man, Isaiah Mobley did got better. Like Isaiah Mobley, like yep. you could tell, like he's been in the gym. You could tell he's played a year in the G League because he's getting to his spots where he want to get to. His ball handling is better. I, I, I've seen him take two, three dribbles off the left. He even made some nice basketball plays where it's just like he's dribbling to kind of set up the back door. He's doing a lot of different things. He's stuffing the stat sheet. I saw him get a dunk the other he day. He tried to end a guy's life. Yeah, he, he got did. fouled. Yeah. He tried to end a dude's life with a poster. And he could shoot. I, I, like I said, I, I text Mike. I said, let me find out Evan, uh, uh, Isaiah Mobley can handle the ball better than Evan. Because he really is comfortable. He get it, pull it up. He's almost initiating offense, like, to be truthful, so like, he, a little bit. At USC, Isaiah was the big that actually initiated the offense. And he played three years in college doing that as opposed to Evan, who was the lob threat mm-hmm. with Isaiah. So that's a position that Evan never even truly played in college, that the Cavs are kind of asking to learn on the fly. This is what Isaiah had done in college, which is why I think he looks way more comfortable. Earl, I know we got a quote on Kobe Altman on yeah, Imani Bates. Yeah, before we move on to talking about the rest of the Cavaliers and what they did in Summer League, we spent a lot of time last week, the week before that, talking about Imani Bates. And Chris Chris Fedor wrote an article after the uh, first game. Kobe Altman was in attendance. He joined the media. And I thought this quote kind of summed up a lot of what we talked about. He says, we go pretty deep in terms of our background and understood some of the challenges there but really excited about the upside of a 19-year-old 6'9 shooter. And having conversations with him, the last couple years have been really hard on him, and having that amount of expectations and pressure is hard on anybody. I think our job is just to alleviate that. Take that off the table. There's no expectations here. Don't have to come in here and shock the world. 
really learn from this group and have fun again. If he blossoms into a rotational player down the road that can really help us space the floor and shoot, which I think is one of his best traits, mm -hmm. that'd be great. But no expectations for him. Certainly have patience and let him grow. It sounds and I like, thought that summed up everything. It sounds like Kobe's been watching our show. It sounds like Kobe's, exactly been, sound Kobe's like. been dial tapping my phone. He'd be watching. And trying to get exactly what we've been saying. Yeah. I, we'll go, one more thing on Bates and we'll go back to the other guys. But, like, you watch those first two games, you see a guy with potential. Yeah. But a guy who may not be ready to contribute immediately. Like, Gosh. I think at the end of the day, he has some NBA-ready moves, but as an overall finished product, He's going to play this year in Canton a lot more than he will in Cleveland. Amen. Or, I guess, with the Charge and the Cavs. See, Cleveland here's charge. what's going to happen. This is what happened. People don't take this in, into content. When you playing, when you playing with other dudes and when you get in camp, right, here's what's going to happen. Paul. Yeah, you're right. When you, you know, when you get up in there and you start doing your thing, you're going to start taking little stuff from other people's game, right? You'll start to see, okay, that's how – because, hey, to be truthful, Donovan Mitchell takes shots like that. <laughs> Donovan Mitchell earned the right like, to take like, shots right. like that. Like, yeah. like, right, right, right. He earned, like, so he, like, <laughs> so if he takes shots like that, he, now, you got to think about it. Donovan Mitchell is a guy who generates lots of space. And all the, uh, depending on how you, 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 it's all footwork. It's footwork, setting your man up, being able to shoot out, out from different di platforms. And Donovan Mitchell can teach him, hey, I'm a smaller guy, I'm about 6'2". So I need to create that level of, of, of space. Darius Garland is a slight built guy. How do you go down and how you're able to, uh, to finish it under the basket and do certain things? So the great part about it is he's going to be learning from younger dudes and he's going to take part to their game. Yeah. And when you are, and, and, and this is the thing, when you are that young and you're that good, you're what is called a savant. And a lot of people don't understand. Like, oh, well, well he, he evidently in these last two years, other team passed on him so he's not that good. I'm like, no, no, no. He's a savant. And what that means is he's doing that all, all natural ability. He's not even really locked in to no training. I'm about to supposed to do this. I'm supposed to, or this is the way you do it. Now he's going to get some training. He's going to be around other elite guards, other elite dudes. Now he's going to be able to pick that up two, three, four times quicker than a regular dude that just try hard. Because guess what we learned? Some people try hard all season, but when talent try hard, you got a whole nother problem. I think. I just think it's about working on your weaknesses. I mean, that's that's simply what it is. He has strengths. What's his strength? He's a great shooter. He creates his own shot. But I think his weaknesses is that he got to be able to see the full court and he got to make better decisions when he has the ball in his hands. He has to understand that these teams are going to take away what he does best and he has to have something else in his bag to be able to thrive in the NBA. And I think that's the part of his game that he's missing. He's so comfortable just catching and shooting man, or just pulling back and doing his move, but he's not comfortable doing anything else. I think once he gets in his bag and understand and figures out his other moves, they're going to make me do things this way. So let me get good at doing those things. Let me get good doing backdoor cuts. Let me get stronger so I can finish through contact. Because if I everybody knows that I'm a catch and shooter, that means if I catch it in pump fake 90% of the time, they're going to jump up in the air or close out too hard. And I will be able to go around them. He got to work on that, doing that thing right there, being able to finish. And it ain't necessarily got to finish. When you get down there, if that center comes up, be able to dump it off to the center or the big man down there, and they can finish it as well. It's just have been making the right play. He got to make the right play when the ball is in his hands, which is a tough thing to do. Obviously, it's not a lot of great players in the NBA. I've seen DeMar DeRozan talking about that, but he definitely, he definitely has the potential to play in the NBA, and he has a unique skill set, being able to catch and shoot, you around the right team, if you playing with LeBron or you playing with with Giannis, they would take you all day long if you're gonna catch and shoot like that and be able to hit at a high clip. So yeah. I think he has uh, an asset that is that is utilizable about to everybody in the NBA, which will keep him around. Yeah, I'm gonna tell you what. So we, we throw a ball in this with the, when we say skill set. And I ain't gonna talk about the player. I'm talking about the show. See, this is why UCSS is legendary. Like there was this. never there was never been a show like this in the game. You know why? Because I do radio shows, right? You know, Mikey has been in television. Tyvis has played basketball be, or played football I professionally. Do, I do basketball. But he, Tyvis <laughs> plays Batman, too. He's great at everything. <laughs> but, but the, Make but, sure y'all check me out on YouTube. Tyvis tries. But but <laughs> I was talking about this, to this about Earl when we was in the studio. Earl produces on the barbershop. So um, I said, look, 
No one in the industry is able to deliver what we deliver. Where else can you <coughs> where else can you turn right now and get you some embody base breakdown good bad ugly where else can you turn tune into and have a breakdown after the game when the Browns do something dumb in the secondary and, <laughs> and Tyvis come up here and be like yeah there was a cover three they were supposed to drop down they didn't so the th the deep third was open but the deep third was supposed to be covered by a linebacker and they didn't get the call you're not getting that nowhere so when other people no disrespect to all the other cats. Some people's just film dudes and they give you film breakdown, but you're not funny and entertaining. So you guys, you know, it is what it is. Some people can be funny and entertaining, but guess what? You ain't got no film. We know you don't watch football and you be at home playing fantasy football. <laughs> UCSS <laughs> give you everything, bro, on a smorgasbord and do it consistently day after day. So if you take the show off today, we still gonna be legendary because ain't nobody do it like that. I'm just sorry. Speaking of legendary, I gotta give a Shout out to a comment I saw in our YouTube chat on the show we did on Friday behind the glass. Uh, so we talked about Luke Travers, who I'll talk about in a sec. He's played very well. Did you guys see this comment? Earl, do you know what I'm talking about? I think I remember exactly what you're talking about. So I said he it reminds me of a little Joe Ingles. A little mm -hmm. playmaker at the three. And someone commented and goes, McNuggets, hell no. He's Scottie Pippen. He's light Manu Ginobili. <laughs> Excuse me. What? If he was Scottie Pippen or like Manu Ginobili, this dude would be not only in the NBA today, he'd be starting on the Cavs. That's exactly what they need at the three, right? Man, that's uh, Scottie I, Pippen. Scottie Pippen. You talk about like Scottie Pippen is one of the most athletic players in the history of the NBA. He could cover anybody. And Manu Ginobili was one of the shiftiest, he slipperiest, he started the Euro the step. Euro step yeah. Creative <laughs> offensive players. Now listen, I like Luke Travers, and I thought of all the guys in the summer league, I've been most impressed with Luke Travers through two games than anyone else. He's plus forty six in two games. He's That's played. Outrageous. He's played forty two minutes in two games, and he's plus forty six in his plus minus, which is not the end all be all stat. But that means when you're on the court, your teams are significantly better. Where is he from? Australia. <laughs> and he plays it's always once again. He people. plays very similar to Joe Ingles. He reads defense as well. He makes lightning quick decisions. He's not super athletic, which is why the Scottie Pippen one. I don't. God get bless it. you. I forget your name. Who said that? But you got to go watch some Scottie Pippen or go watch some Luke Travis because you clearly have not seen the two play together. But he makes all the right basketball plays, ninety nine percent of the time. And to have a guy like that, whether he comes this year or next year, he's, in, he's got a three-year contract in the NBL in Australia, mm -hmm. but an out to come to Cleveland if they call him up to the NBA at any point. So whenever the Cavs decide he's ready for the NBA, he's a 6'7", pretty good spot-up shooter, makes lightning-quick decisions, and he doesn't care about scoring. That's the ideal that three yeah, I to say, in the totality need. of the package of the system the Cavs are building. Uh, who did we, so, who so, did we trade away? Uh, who was our bench players that we – Jetty Osmond? Lamar Stevens. So we still got like Dean Wade, right? Dean Wade's still there, yeah. Okay. So we look at it. Like, I was gonna say that. Like we look at the, you look at the roster, right? You and I'm, I refuse to say core four. I don't, I don't like the marketing in that. I don't like yeah, that. I don't like, I don't like it either. I don't either. You it's got not a good enough core four to be at a all, core at all. Four. Talking about uh, Jared Allen, you got Jared you, Allen, Evan Mobley, Darius, and Donovan. Yes, yeah. yeah. and then who else is starting in that that unit? Struce will be the fifth. Struce, starter. so that's five right there. So you got Karis LeVert, he's a sixth man. You got Niang, that's seven. Jerome. Uh, uh, you got Jerome. Ty Jerome is, is eight. Rubio. Rubio's nine. How many they keep? They keep 12. 12. On 12. 12. So that's nine. Um, that's a backup center we have. We they just, just signed Damian Jones. Yeah. Okay, that's 10. You got, you'll have Mobley. Mobley will be up. He'll play a that's little a, bit. With that's 11. And, and then you got that last spot. And, that, and that's why... If it is Bates at some times, if it's Merrill, it's Sam up. Merrill. They got so many guys on two-way contracts yes. now that they're going to be rotating. Mer I like Merrill. He can shoot. Beyond you know Merrill averaged, well, two things. You know Merrill was the number one overall pick in the G League draft last year? That's crazy. Like, the huh. number the number one over. He averaged 23 points in the G League last year. That's crazy. Really? Now, there's no, I have no, idea. There's no defense played in the G League. So, <laughs> when you see dudes putting up big numbers, and oh, this is not. Oh, a, that's the case. Imani Bates going to go for 50. Imani Bates should average 20 <laughs> points a game in the G League. All these dudes at, I think, the final scores. The average score is like 140 to 137. It's like the what? They play no defense, literally no defense at all. It's like the summer league, but it's it, it gets guys good experience. And that's I tell you I'm what, I'm going you know, to a charge game. They're a lot of fun. Sure. They're a lot of fun. I'm go for sure. And, be, and here's the thing too, like 
the way the the reason it helps guys in the NBA because it's like this. Like, if I'm hitting, if I'm getting a bunch of shots up. Yeah. That means like it, the shot, the shot don't change. Like the rim ain't getting no bigger. Like I got, the, I'm getting my shots up. I'm doing what I need to do. So I think, I think, I will say this. How much, how much of Imani Bates will be? So it's a nice story in the off season. Will he stay on the roster of, or stay on the memory of Cavs fans once the season starts? Right? Like, will Cavs fans are they still going to be like? Hey, no, I'm trying to see what Imani Bates is doing. Or you think this is just more of a situation with the Summer League, given the fact that there's nothing much going on and he's like an interesting name. I'd be interested to see how much buzz he still continues to garner if he is a two-way player with the charge. I mean, I think once the season starts and we start focusing on real games, I think he kind of fades into the background a little bit. But he's it's always good to have that one guy you want to keep an eye on. Like, yeah. how many guys in the G League last year did you ever check a box? Never. Before? Never, right? Never. Not Never. for no, none of them. Amani I, I ch- checked for Mobley a little bit because I thought it was funny. I wanted to see if it was, he was – is he one of them Giannis moves? Because Giannis that, – that 6'4 Giannis is garbage. <laughs> yes. What's his Dam- – Damascus is his name? Like, I'm like, how did – he don't – he got a brother on the team named. Uh, him. First of all, you don't do that. Okay? <laughs> first of all, you don't do that. Look, yeah. that meaning that's your it's, cousin. Is is Giannis? Thanasis. <laughs> uh, <laughs> whatever. Thanasis. Damascus. Ka- Ka- Kos- Ka- what is it? Coast. Costas. No. Coast- Co- There's coach. four of them, yeah. And Jesus Alex. Christ. Yeah, Alex is the young one. Yeah, Alex is the young one. That friends and family plan for T-Mobile is whack. <laughs> hey, what's up, my man? Hey, Earl, what's hey, up, bro? Hey, couple, a couple things, man. I hate him. I hate him. <laughs> <laughs> friends uh, and So family. a couple things before we move on here. Uh, one, Steve Becker texts us. We forgot about Isaac Okoro when we was talking about the Cavs. Oh, bench. yeah. They have a curl, oh, too, yeah. So totally for, forgot about him. So Big Nuggets, I got, this, this question is really for you. Shoot. My man, Craig Porter Jr., what did you think of him in the first two games? He was efficient. I mean, listen, he... Second game, I liked him. Yeah, I think he had 10 points in the second game. Yeah. 11 in the first, if I'm, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, he showed burst. I think his lack of size in terms of, like, his physical stature, because he's a kind of undersized guy, limits, like, his high-end potential in the NBA just because it's really, really, really hard to be a really good scorer at a you know a high NBA level if you're not six seven six eight there are guys like Donovan Mitchell's a smaller guy but you have to be elite 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 and if you're elite 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 like that I don't think you go undrafted but I like what I saw I mean he definitely looks like he can play at the level yeah. he's definitely gonna be a contributor for the G League um, I don't expect him to see much time in Cleveland if any this year but I leave that going if Cas might have found something in undrafted yeah guy. I like I like him I like him that Cooper, Cooper is funny he's an all time G League player. Coop, yeah, uh, he's, Cooper he's, averaged 25 in the G League last yeah. year. Like, and he's another guy. He's, and, yeah. and, and here's why the NBA is so talented. Cooper is an NBA guard. Yeah. There's just guys that are in the NBA are just better. And, like, yeah. you watch Cooper play, and he's got NBA moves. He can shoot it. He don't like to pass either. The Cavs got a bunch of guys in that summer league roster yeah. who, who don't like to pass, which is just a kind of fun team construction. What's up? 